Hi, this is Daniel, and this is a quick introduction to Blender AE. Blender AE is a new add-on for Blender that allows you to export data from empties, lights, cameras, solids, objects, and their vertices or faces. I've been working on this for quite some time, um, and I hope it's useful. First, uh, we're just gonna install the add-on. To do that in Blender, we go to Edit, Preferences, and then click Install. And in the Download folder, there'll be a Blender AE.zip file, which is the actual add-on. We just select that and click Install Add-on. That's installed, but we also need to enable it by checking that box. And you can see on the side, when we enable and disable, it pops up as a tab so that's ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is um, make sure After Effects is open. I've got After Effects open with a blank comp. And then we just click Connect to AE. And that'll quickly search for After Effects. You can also manually search for After Effects, the program AfterEffects.exe, if you want, or you can manually enter the path, or you can leave it disconnected and then it will export the data into the Documents Blender AE folder. But we'll leave that connected for the moment. I'm just gonna switch to a simpler scene of uh, this futuristic phone. Let's export the objects. So we can select multiple objects or a sim single object, and that'll export um, the data and bring it in as a null in After Effects. So let's just select this object for the moment. So as you can see, that actually creates a new comp that matches the frame duration, the frame rate, and the resolution of the Blender scene. And we've got our future phone null in here. And because that was animated in the location scale end orientation, it's added keyframes for that animation. Go back to Blender. So we can select multiple objects. I'll select these two lights. We've already imported that object, so I'll leave that one out, and I'll also select the camera. And that'll give us the correct view, and also those lights. So we can go a step further with this object and go into edit mode. And I'll just uh, go to wireframe view, so we can see what's going on. If I go to vertex mode, we can actually bring in all those vertices. I'll just select these four for the moment. That's brought in the vertices of that first face. So the more vertices that you import, I'll just undo this in After Effects and bring in all those vertices. It'll take a little bit longer but not too long for vertices. The longest process is actually bringing in faces, which is the next thing I'll show you. So I'll just select a face. Say we want to composite something onto this face. We can select it, export to AE, and that'll do some calculations in the background and create a shape layer for the face. And we'll also pre-comp it so that you can add whatever you want on top. And as you can see, that's 3D shape layer. And in here we can um, add whatever we want. Here's one note that the orientation is quite a tricky thing to get right. Make sure that this, whatever layers you put in here are also 3D. At the moment, this has collapsed transformations on just to enable any size shape to come through. Um, but as you can see, the orientation's um, flipped on that. So we'll just rotate this 90 degrees and I'll recenter that. And just scale it down a bit as well. And now that text is on the face or whatever animation or footage or texture we want to put. I'll just delete all this 
and go back. Now if we select all the faces, this time what you'll see is it'll give us a warning. Once we've selected a few faces, it'll warn you that it might take some time. We've got six faces selected and it's going to process 138 frames. But note you can press escape at any point to abort the import process. But for the moment we'll just let this play on. Okay, so all those faces have come in and we have a complete object there and we also have a controller that will let you move that or rotate or scale or animate those properties. Um, but it already has the animation from Blender and we can't see the 3D, it's very flat because there's no light. So I'll just bring in these lights again. And there we go. So we've got that 3D shape object in there. Now you notice in the comp here, the Shire button is on, or the Shire switch. And that's um, actually hiding all the vertices nulls that were used to create the face shape and the face null as well. So if you do want to parent something to the face null, you can, or to a particular vertex, you can through there as well. I'll just switch that back on to hide those layers. The amount of time required to import depends on how much animation you have on a face or an object. This object has animation on the location, rotation and scale. So for it's got to go through and create a few keyframes also for the faces because they're changing shape. If I go into in my promo video, which is actually a thousand frames and has a lot of objects and a lot of animation and simulations and dynamics, um, I can select this ground plane here, which has no animation and select a number of faces from, from that. And it'll actually be quite fast because there is no animation keyframes on this. It has given me a warning that there's four faces, but they're only processing one frame, so it won't take too long. You can see it skims through that quite quickly. Go back to our phone scene for a second. I have another shape in here, which has another object, which has a shape key on it. And that's also supported for planar faces. So if I, select this face and I'll just wireframe that so we can see what I've selected. And there's the face with the shape keys. And I'll bring in the camera from Blender. Go back to camera view, select the camera, export to AE. And I'll also bring in the render that I did of that object. And there we can see that the face perfectly lines up with the object. In this scene, we've got some rigid body physics and we can select those objects and export them to After Effects as well. And you can see all that information has come through. For planes, if you select a plane, it'll automatically detect that it's a plane and create a shape layer and I'll just bring that camera in again so we can see that. One other note with the lights is sun lights will come in as point lights but spotlights and point lights will be spotlights and point lights in After Effects. This has also got multiple cameras that are set with markers. Um, we can select both of those and bring them in and of course we can bring in the whole shape if we want and I'll bring these lights in just to give a bit of dimension to that. If you have very large shape layers like this floor layer it um, does slow down the comp quite a lot so it may be helpful to disable any very large shape layers while you're previewing. Physics simulations open up a whole lot of possibilities between Blender and After Effects. I'm excited to see what people come up with. You can export the data without being connected to After Effects, as I mentioned at the start. 
If you disconnect and then click export to AE, it'll actually export the data, at the moment I've got this cube selected, to the Blender AE folder in the documents folder. And it's called Blender AE underscore data dot JSON. And the add-on will also try to copy the import script into that same folder when you do that. So if we go back to After Effects, and let's just create, let's delete all those. Let's just create a new comp. And we'll go File, Scripts, Run Script File. Go to the Documents, Blender AE, and we'll select that Blender AE underscore import and click Open. That will go through and import that Blender data. And we've got our cube. Of course, we don't have our cameras in here, so we need to bring those in as well. So that's Blender AE. I hope you find it useful and I hope this has given you a few ideas on how you can possibly use it.